Let's take a look at graphical convolution, a visual aid to setting up the convolution integral. To get started, let's consider the convolution integral itself. It has the following form. y of t is the time integration over all time of the product of x and h with suitably modified argument. And we can shorthand this as x of t convolved with h of t. x is our system input, h is the system's impulse response. We see that the argument is translating h relative to our signal x, and it translates using the variable t. We see that we're forming the product of the two, and then integration can be interpreted as finding the area underneath this product. This is best understood by considering a specific example. Let's look at this particular shape for x of t. It jumps up to two at time zero, it's constant, and then ramps back down to zero at time two. The impulse response has been zero, jumps to one, and then tapers off back to zero at time three. Now our dummy variable of integration can be used as an alternative name for all of our time axes on the on the pictures. So I'll begin by swapping out all the t, t uh, variables for tau. Now let's unpack this. First thing we have is the negative sign on tau. If I'm picturing h of tau, then h of minus tau is going to flip this around the vertical axis, just like that. This will become the first part of a familiar phrase for Im implementing convolution. The next, we, next thing we see is the sum of this variable t. t will then allow us to translate this h function back and forth. Now I'm drawing specifically for the case of t equals zero. Note that if you substitute t equals zero into this expression, we have exactly the picture that I'm drawing now. Therefore, we can think of t equals zero, which we know is right here, as being the leading edge of h. Now imagine that t is some negative value less than zero. I wanna keep that general, I'm just saying somewhere less than zero, and that's gonna slide t back in the negative direction. This original trailing edge, now we, which we know is three seconds away, we can write that as t minus three. As we vary t, then this picture will slide back and forth. This gives us the familiar interpretation for graphical convolution as the flip and slide procedure. All right, let's then consider that we are forming the product of x and this modified version of h. And let's visualize that product specifically. Here's my translated version of h, here's the input x. The red trace is going to show the product of these two curves, and you can also look at the top to see the actual time. So the red curve then is the product of these two waveforms. Here you'll note that we have the product of two ramp shapes, and that's giving us a parabolic shape on the red trace. As you notice, as this slides back and forth, that is, as h slides back and forth with, with respect to x, we end up with seven different regions, as it turns out. Because these are piecewise linear functions, we can set up the integration in each one of these distinct regions. So as it slides past x, we have these seven regions. Let's consider the case where t is less than zero first. We have no overlap, that means the product is zero. Therefore, if we're integrating zero, we just have zero. So the output is zero for t less than zero. Now let's consider the next region. This is where time is between zero and one seconds. Again, the red trace shows the product of the two curves and we need to find the area. And so this is where we're setting up our integral. We would write in this region that y of t 
is the time integral between 0 and t. We are integrating x of tau times h of t minus tau. x of tau is a constant at 2. h of t minus tau is something to do with this ramp. So it looks like we need to come up with an equation for that ramp. Going back to the original h of t, we would think of this as a rise over run for the slope. That would give us one third, and it's negative because the ramp is declining. The offset that we need is one. This equation then describes this ramp. Now I need to substitute in specifically t minus tau every place that I see t. So I'll drop that back in the integral, and now let's proceed to work on the details of integration. I can just I can split up the integral into three pieces. This will give me two tau evaluated between zero and time t. Because two thirds t is not a function of tau, that actually can be brought out of the in integral entirely. Here we're integrating d tau between zero and t. Now in this case, two-thirds can be brought out, and we are left with tau squared divided by two, evaluated from zero to t. And continuing here, we have two t minus zero. This would be two-thirds t squared minus zero. And over here we have two-thirds t squared over two. Twos cancel nicely, and we're left with t squared divided by three. We have two terms involving t squared. I'll consolidate those. This becomes my result that's valid for the time region zero to one. All right, let's move on to the next region. This is between one second and two seconds. Now we see that under the red curve, we actually have two distinct areas that we need to integrate. The first one is based on that familiar ramp that we just worked with, except now we're integrating between 0 and 1. In the second region, we have the product of not only the impulse ramp, but we also have a ramp. Incidentally, the range there is 1 to t should point that out. But now we see that the input, input ramp also needs an equation as well. Slope here is minus 2. Multiply that by t. The intercept would be 4. And that becomes the equation for x of t in this range. I'll change the order around and write this as 4 minus 2 tau and we, we're integrating x of tau. Then we'll put in that original form for h of t minus tau. Now at this point, doing things manually becomes rather tedious in a hurry, so I'm going to use a computer algebra tool, Maple in this case, to evaluate the integral. Let's now move on to time step between 2 and 3. That part's the same. Here we're integrating from 1 to 2. Between 2 and t, the product is 0, so that part doesn't count. All right, moving on to the next region. Note that we still have two regions for the overlap. Now in this case, this trailing edge is at time t minus 3. Therefore, we need to integrate from t minus 3 to 1. Now in the second region, we are still integrating from 1 to 2. That remains the same. And we have this result. All right, getting closer to the end. 
This is the last region where we have partial overlap. We have only one integral to write, and this would run from t minus 3 to 2. And again, using the computer algebra tool, we end up with this result for y of t. Now, let's put all of this together for our finished result. y of t looks like this piecewise continuous function. I'm plotting that out here so we can see what it looks like. And it's instructive to realize that this original shape still is preserved in kind of an overall sense, but we see that the action of the impulse response is to smooth and blur out that signal x of t. Another thing that's of interest is looking at each of the different regions in particular. This one that looks like a purely linear region, sure enough, you can convince yourself that that's a straight line. And that wraps up this example of graphical convolution.